Consent factory, new normal left. What? What? What is this? So, I was going to do this on Sunday night. I love C.J. Hopkins. This year, I really discovered his work and snarky and accurate and calling out the the crap. And we've been covering a bunch of his articles. So, uh, he went to London to speak to the left. Now, no, not the left that you're probably thinking of. Well, not that we're thinking of, but most people. Uh, not the mask wearing Ukrainian flag flying left, not the pronoun using segregationist left, not the WEF, WHO, FBI, CIA, DHS, and MI6 loving left, basically the TYT boutique left, not the global capitalist new normal left, the other left, the old school left, the COVID denying, conspiracy theorizing, Putin loving, far right extremist left. Uh, there will be no one. Yeah, we know. Yes, they do. But Anna got canceled. Now she's a right winger too, apparently. So there were approximately 150 of them. Yeah, I, no, I'm not. I don't want to ask them. Come on. And we gathered in a homophobic church, homophobic quote unquote church in Islington. Yes, Islington, which is more or less the British headquarters to the new normal left. We didn't care. Let them come for us. We said they didn't. It was a Saturday. They were probably out shopping or hunting down imaginary anti-Semites like Jeremy Corbett. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and did our thing. Our thing was a conference loosely based on leftist opposition to the World Economic Forum and its assorted dystopian visions of our future. Uh, you know, e eating the bugs and owning nothing and being happy, that kind of stuff. Um, I was invited by this group Whoa, called... Nothing? And love it. Um... But um, I was invited by this group called Real Left to speak on a panel with Fabio Vigi or Vigi. Uh, for Fabio. A, not that Fabio. A professor of critical theory at Cardiff University. I'm guessing he's British. We in didn't my talk. Head, in my head, it's that Fabio. Yes, well, so, with a British accent. You know, um, exactly. We didn't, they didn't Could talk be about. Way better. Well. They didn't talk about the World Economic Forum very much. They mostly talked about global capitalism, totalitarianism, and the new normal left. And here are some of the broad strokes of what I said at the conference. And again, this is C.J. Hopkins, writer for the Consent Factory. He's an American based in Germany, outstanding independent journalist. Um, he also writes with Off Guardian. Um, in order to understand what happened to the, to the left, i.e. how it became the new normal left, you have to understand the history of global capitalism over the last 30 years or so. Actually, you've got to go back a little farther, back to the early 20th century, when the great ideological game was still afoot. Back then, capitalism, having overthrown the aristocracies, was on the march, transforming the world into one big marketplace. It was challenged by two opposing ideologies, fascism and communism, and they fought it out. Long story short, capitalism won. Yeah, we, we're really reaping the benefits Games of that. Afoot. Right? So like global Sherlock Holmes in this. Seriously. Uh, global capitalism yeah. was born. Global cap. It's one big global capitalist world now. It has been since the early nineteen nineties, when I graduated high school ish. Uh, global cap has no external adversaries, so it has nothing to do but clear and hold, i.e. wipe out pockets of internal resistance and implement ideological uniformity which is what it's been doing for the last 30 years. First in the Soviet bloc, then in the global war on terror, and finally in our so-called Western democracies, as we've just experienced up close and personal during the shock and awe phase of the rollout of the new normal and are continuing <laughs> to experience, albeit somewhat less dramatically. What was, what was with shock the- and <laughs> Shock and awe. Shock and awe. You know, they, they started this new normal yeah, crap, yeah. like, Two months or three months into um, COVID, I remember them like starting to plant that seed into me. I was still watching corporate media, at least at somewhat at that point. Um, so I was watching the news with my wife and I and I could hear them planting this return to normalcy, the new normal. In other words, global cap is going totalitarian. That is what the new normal is. It is not your granddad's totalitarianism. It's a new global capitalist form of totalitarianism. It displays... Straight out of idiocracy, globo, globo, globo cap, globo, globo cap. cap. That's right. Yeah. It displays a number of familiar features: suspension of constitutional rights, official propaganda, goon squad, censorship, ubiquitous symbols of ideological conformity, gratuitous restrictions of freedom of movement, and other aspects of everyday life. Fifteen-minute cities, anyone? Hatred and persecution of the yeah. official Untermenschen. Segregation, that's the unvaccinated, criminalization of dissent, 
mob violence, book burning, which we're literally experiencing right now, show trials, etc. But there won't be anyone goose-stepping around in jackboots shrieking about the master race. It's not that kind I mean, of totalitarian. Ukraine, but... <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, um, actually, didn't didn't the Ukrainians just do that like this this week? <laughs> Like uh, you were Straight showing, goose stepping. like you were, you were showing yeah. a video. You're like, it was this, was that a goose step? Strategery. That's right. Hey, Harold. Strategery. Um, to understand Strategery. it, to understand it, which would, which it would behoove us to do. We need to understand global capitalist ideology, which isn't as easy as it sounds. Global capitalism has no ideology. Rather than its ideology is reality. And when you have no ideological adversaries, you don't need an ideology. You're basically God. Reality is whatever you say it is, and whoever disagrees is a science denier, or a conspiracy theorist, or a dimbob, or a malinformationist, or some other type of deluded extremist. You needn't argue with ideology with anyone, because you have no ideological opponents. Society is divided into two fundamental groups, the normal people who accept reality, that's the normies that we call them, and be the deviants and extremists, my people, who do not. Um, your political... <laughs> my people. My people. Your political and ideological opponents are pathologized, preemptively delegitimized. After all, who would argue against reality except liars and the clinically insane? Yes, of course, there is intramural political and ideological conflict within the confines of so-called yeah. normality. Breaking points versus frisbee. TYT. What? What? And Frisbee. And Frisbee. And frisbee. Well, that is, that is within the confines. So just as there is intramural, <laughs> intramural Frisbee in competition between global corporations, right? You're, you read ahead. That wasn't fair. <laughs> but challenging the ideological no. system itself is impossible. Imp yeah, challenging the ideological system itself is, of course, impossible because there is no ground outside it from which to mount an attack because there is no ideology. We are the whatever reality is. This is probably the hardest thing for most of us to come to terms with, that there is no ideological territory outside global capitalism. There is no outside. There are no external adversaries. There are only insurgencies and counterinsurgency ops. The rest is just Sounds like Counter-Strike. Well, the rest is intramural competition, which immediately made me think of Tim Dillon going, it's all fake business. It's all fake it's business. All, it's all intramural frisbee. That's it. And here's another thing that we need to understand about global <laughs> capitalist ideology. And it isn't going to make my conservative readers or my libertarian readers or my leftist readers happy, but it is essential to understanding the new normie left and the shape of the current ideological landscape. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible and not get lost in a bunch of post-structuralist mumbo jumbo. Ready? Okay, here we go. I, lo I love this. Here do we go. Capitalism is a values decoding machine. It decodes society of despotic values, i.e. religious, racist, socialist, traditional values, and any and all values that interfere with the unimpeded flows of capital. Capitalism does not distinguish. This is how capitalism, or democracy if you're squeamish, <laughs> Read us from a despotic reality in which values emanated from the aristocracies, kings, priests, the church, etc. Basically, it transferred the emanation of an enforcement of values from despotic structures to the marketplace, where everything is essentially a commodity. Sure. He's so so hurrah! Amazing. Well, uh, uh, as somebody who who is in sales, I I know people that would certainly celebrate that. So hurrah! Capitalism freed us from despotism. Great. I'm grateful. I'm not a big fan of despotism. Uh, the problem is it's just a machine and it has no off switch. And now it dominates yeah. the entire planet unopposed or unrestricted in any meaningful way. So it's How's doing different than despotism. <clears throat> so it's doing what it's designed to do, stripping societies of their despotic values, rendering everything and everyone a commodity, establishing and enforcing ideological uniformity, neutralizing pockets of internal resistance through COINTELPRO, through all kinds of different methods. But the vast majority of that resistance yeah. is reactionary. <clears throat> I don't mean that in the pejorative sense, pejorative sense, most of the opposition to the new normal has come from the traditional political right, from folks who are trying to preserve their values, i.e. to prevent them from being decoded by the global cap values decoding machine. A lot of these folks don't see it that way because they don't want to face the fact that what they're resisting is global capitalism 
they call it other names like crony capitalism or corporatism, which is one of my favorites. That's what I call it. Or cultural Marxism. Cultural Marxism. Right. I don't really call what they communism. I don't really care what they call it, except when they call it communism, which just makes them sound extremely labels. silly. What labels are bad? What I never labels heard anybody say. I've never heard anybody say that before. What labels, labels are bad? Labels are bad. No. So the point is, is that these folks comprise a reactionary force that's pushing back against the advance of global cap and its ideology, whether they know they what they're resisting or not. Russia is another such reactionary force, at least in so far as it's attempting to defend what remains of its national sovereignty. Syria and Iran are two other examples. All these reactionary forces are integrated within global cap system and at the same time are resisting their absorption by it. Um, the dynamics are complex. It isn't a cartoon or a Hollywood movie with good guys and bad guys. Yeah, they're all bad guys. That's right. That's what we've been saying. There are no good guys. There aren't. There are no good guys anywhere here. This is what we've been trying to explain to everyone. Um, anyway, the battlefield looks like this. You've got Global Cap conducting its clear and hold up. And you've got the reactionary populist backlash against it. Again, labels are bad. And that's it. Those are the only significant forces on the battlefield currently. We're basically, <laughs> which brings us to the miserable state of the left. Hello, folks. Miserable liberals. The left, and I mean the left broadly, so liberals and both serious and Brooklyn leftists are in an Miserable ideological liberals. well what? are in an ideological double bind. Either they align with an increasingly totalitarian global cap, or they align with the reactionary backlash against it. Yeah, I know which side I've I've gone to. Um they can't align with the reactionaries because a lot of them are, well, you know, somewhat bigoted or they believe in God or they object to drag queens rubbing Jim themselves Bob. all over kids. Jim Bob. Uh, praise Jim Bob. Um, many of them own multiple firearms. That's i.e. the reactionaries, not the drag queens. Well, some of the drag queens too. <laughs> and they fly giant American flags outside their homes or whatever the flags they fly in Great Britain. They also sometimes fly Ukraine flags and back to blue and the thin blue line flags. And there's a certain you know, Trump oh. flags. You know, you see them all. Um, we know who he's talking about. Many of them have voted for Trump or Brexit or the AFD here in Germany or the National Rally in France or the Brothers of Italy. These are not BBC NPR listening people. These are not nice pronoun using people. Yeah. No, these are the scary working class, working class people that don't have time for your bullshit. So... The left has aligned with global cap, which, after all, is still decoding all these nasty despotic values like racism and other forms of bigotry and is opposing dictators and religious zealots and is spreading democracy, quote unquote, across the planet. Right. That's the uniformity can where you have to comply and you have to adhere to the state narrative or you're going to be canceled or your bank account's going to be shut Resistance. off and leaked. That's right. It's futile. It's futile. We have to get that sound bit. <clears throat> um you might think I'm being a bit that I'm being facetious. I'm not. Global capitalism is still doing that, which I support, as do all liberals and leftists. We're fucked. Yeah. But the catch is, as capitalism continues, global capitalism continues to do that and makes a big show of doing that, it's also going totalitarian, which we've seen. It's not decoding those despotic values out of the goodness of its heart. What it's doing is establishing ideological uniformity. The problem is it has no ideology. So how do you do that? All it knows is how to decode values, transforming societies into markets and everything in them into valueless commodities, which is which it is doing in totalitarian fashion. The Nazis referred to this process as Gleichschaltung, which is the synchronization of all elements of society according to official ideology. That is what is happening currently globally. I, wow. Mm. Damn. Uh, okay. Uh, something about, I told the conference in London, I wish I had some brilliant plan of action to offer. Sadly, I do not. Probably no one does at this stage of things. After all, the new normal is just getting started, but 
That said, I'm sure the one thing I'm sure about is if you don't want to end up eating Z bugs and owning nothing and being happy in your AI monitored 15 minute city while you wait for your social credit app to update your vaccination record so you can access your CBDC account and make another minimum payment on your ever deepening credit card debt. It would probably be a pretty good idea to understand what's actually happening or maybe not. What do I know? I'm just an old far right extremist lefty. I love CJ Hopkins. He's so good.